Right guys, another video for you budding Mavericks out there. Maybe you watch Top Gun Maverick. Maybe you're a fan of the original Top Gun. You fancy being a fighter pilot in DCS World. Maybe you're into aircraft in general. You want to do Microsoft Flight Simulator. Whatever it is, maybe you want to do Space Sims like Elite Dangerous. But this video has caught your eye because we're talking about doing head tracking for free. Well, it's free providing you own a webcam. But once you've got this free software and you've got your webcam set up, you'll be able to move your head around to look inside your cockpit, check out the scenery which is actually pretty immersive and incredibly useful. So we're going to show you how to do it. We'll do timestamps as well as useful links in the description of the video to help you along. So let's put DCS World on active pause so we don't crash and burn. We'll start off getting you on track with the software. So links in the description. We're going to go to GitHub to get open track. So you can see we've got the releases there. There's 43 of them. God knows what it will be by the time you're watching this video. But current at the moment is 2022.2.0. Just grab whatever's latest. Uh, download that file. Open it. Run it to install the software. So it's going to go to your C program files directory. Uh, so again, go in there. Find that, um, find that file. Create a shortcut to your desktop. Have it on your pin to your taskbar, whatever's going to help you open the software up. As well as open track, we're going to want AI track. Think of it kind of like a plugin for open track. So we're going to click on assets. And again, we want the latest version. So AI track version 0.6.5 alpha at the moment, but whatever it will be, get the latest one. The difference being this is a zip file. You'll need to extract it out either with 7-zip, WinRAR, whatever take that folder and put it somewhere safe where you know it is have it in your, your root of your c drive or what have you open the folder up find that ai track executable right click create a shortcut or pin it to your taskbar whatever works for you but we need both of these programs open in order for head tracking to work in our chosen game or simulator so let's start with ai track so you can see me which is good that means the webcam can see me ignore the mess in the room i'm decorating i need to fill holes paint get more desk space up uh, but all that matters is i've got pretty good lighting so my webcam can see me and the ai track is able to do this outline of my features that's how it's tracking the movement unlike track ir where they sell you a camera and they sell you these infrared emitters and it's tracking those we're just doing this off our generic webcam but we want to show you how to get this set up so we're going to stop tracking and i'm going to click configuration so we've got camera mine says zero one or two now this will vary for all of you for me it's camera one the reason there's other options is i have a capture card and other things plugged in so it's process of trial and error find which option works for your webcam uh, i've got i think it's the c920 from logitech it's a 1080p hd webcam uh, even though it's 1080p i've set it to 640 by 480 30 frames per second even having it 60 frames per second didn't actually seem to make it any better so I just left it at 30. we've got use remote open track clients we're going to tick that so we've got the ip address we're going to add in so that'll be the local ip address for your pc it'll be the same for all of you 127.0.0.1 port 4242 because every guide i've seen for using open track has used that as the port so i'm not going to break with tradition easy to remember 4242 we've got our tracker parameters so distance from me to the webcam 0.5 meters might be different for all of you depending on your setup so you can uh, change that as needed camera fov is 90 model type is fast landmark stabilization is ticked auto check updates is ticked and then you'll apply close that window down and you can do start tracking with enable preview and see if you've picked the right camera and it's actually tracking your head so in order for this to work within games we need to set up open track i said uh think of ai track as kind of like a plugin for open track so we'll talk about open track now uh best place to start is talking about the profiles so you will have default.ne and what i'm going to do is give you my settings which you can start with and then tweak them as necessary but you can go a little bit further once you're reasonably happy with your baseline settings you can click on profile create a new profile based off default.ne to then tweak for different games so you can have one for dcs world where it's maybe a little bit more sensitive because you're dogfighting you can have a different one for microsoft flight simulator because all you're really doing is just trying to take in the scenery you want it to be slow and smooth have another one for elite dangerous or star system whatever you're playing so we'll start off doing the default in e for you that well, mine's called dcs uh, we've got input again my stuff's grayed out simply because 
it's in use but you'll be able to click on input and do UDP over network select that click on the hammer icon which is for settings and we're going to put in that port number that we did for AI track 4242 so it is taking its input from AI track over UDP over the network we want output which is free track 2.0 enhanced and click on the settings so you can select your interface I just leave on enabled on both never had any problems but you can choose free track if you want to um, just I'd suggest just leaving on enable both unless you have problems so we've got filter I've select Acceler again we'll click on the settings so this is we need, do need to break down what's going on in the tabs so we've got shortcuts I uh, don't have to do this but it might be helpful for some of you so to center the view I've clicked bind and pushed a button on the base of my joystick so it happens to be button 28 on my VKB Gladiator Evo you might not have buttons going spare on your joystick on your HOTAS so you want to do uh, a keyboard shortcut you can do that so you can have one to center the view again you can have one to toggle the head tracking on and off um, so on and so on start the tracking stop the tracking do whatever you want to do you can see we've got a center at startup so we might as well have that enabled and we'll move on to output so this is important we set this up right we've got destination source and invert so for your which is moving my head left and right that's going to be source your but it's not inverted pitch is moving my head up and down that's source pitch and it is inverted roll x and y we're not using just disable them Z source is Z and we do invert it and that's me moving my face closer to the webcam so we can zoom our view in so we see custom center pose alter the center position center games useful if the default position is too much downward or upward so I've got my X at minus one you probably won't have to mess around with this too much but just know the options are there uh, to tweak if you see fit relative translation tab not using it none of it we can just skip over that so game detection you can add an executable for a game like DCS world like Microsoft Flight Simulator and then tell it to start tracking automatically when the game starts and use a selected profile we've created we said that about that a little bit earlier so uh, the Microsoft Flight Sim profile isn't as sensitive as DCS world and so on you can tweak things around what suits you so we've got a filter which is also important this is to smooth out the, the movement uh, so I've got rotational filter in your pitch and roll smoothing is 1.8 dead zone is 0 0.06 positional filtering for X Y Z smoothing is one mic mic and dead zone is 0 0.1 mic mic again you can tweak these things around and see what difference it makes to you these are just baseline settings that seem to work quite well for me so we'll do OK now we're still not finished yet we need to do the mapping think of this as the sensitivity so when you first do this be on your you're just gonna have a straight line going across uh, and we can see that this red dot is tracking on on that curve based on my head movement so on your straight line you can click to add these gray dots so click to add one and then you can drag that to wherever you you want to put it so my first gray dot I've set to be value 10.00 times 0, 0.00 now what this is doing is just giving us a little bit of play a little bit of a dead zone so it's not picking up any slight movements of my head you can set this to what you want you can have it to 5 you can set it to 15 you can have more of a dead zone it's up to you but you can see that it's not actually moving in DCS till we go past that gray dot then we're going up on the curve and 180 kicks in at 60.00 times 180.00 so you might want to change that to 55 50 whatever what works for you you might want to put in extra points and and tweak around the curve it's up to you this is just to give you uh, some settings to quickly get up and going so we've got the pitch I certainly find this to be quite finicky this is the up and down head movement so again we're going to have our first gray dot which is going to be value 5.00 times 0, 0.00 that little bit of play that dead zone have it at 10 have it at whatever you want um, but yeah as I'm moving my head up now it's starting to move but it will start to spaz out there we go it's just yeah, it doesn't seem to like tracking my head up and down too much but it is what it is so roll oh yeah the maximum we've got 30.00 times 90.00 so again tweak it around see if you can get it a little bit better roll x and y we said we're not using z we are using that's the zoom so our z zone starts at value 1.00 times 00 and it 
second point we add in is 30.00 times 75.00 so you can see that's tracking the movement in click OK so with AI track you see what your head's doing and you'll see the octopus is moving around based off what our head's doing but the real test is doing it in DCS so let's bring that up let's get my uh, face back on the screen so you see what's happening if I crank my neck back a little bit check my mirrors I can lean forward look at my multifunction displays I can get my mouse and click on the buttons if I need to use the upfront controller move knobs look over my shoulder so looking behind me I've got 32 inch monitor so I've got to look back at the screen but it's actually not too difficult to do just out of the corner of my eye reasonably happy with that I can look down see the stick see the throttle see the switches and the knobs so I have you yeah seems to be working reasonably well I could probably tweak it a little bit better but yeah just to get up and going not too bad at all so let's get rid of my face we're going to DCS proper so unpause it so what I want to point out is there are like limitations so open track isn't as going to be as good as track IR but obviously track IR is going to cost us money um, and there's things that head tracking isn't ideal for and there's a reason why I use VR so if I look over to the side I'll turn on the helmet queuing system so you see that crosshair comes up so wherever I look if I was flying the Apache helicopter that's where my cannon would be pointing I pull the trigger and then you know wherever that crosshair is they're dead if you fly in the A10, the F16, F18, you can designate points with the helmet queuing system. You can see it's kind of awkward to get that crosshair to be exact. Compared to VR, where it's like a one-to-one -one movement where I look, the crosshair goes. So, yeah, not ideal for using the helmet queuing system, um, but you don't have to use that. Those of you who bought a throttle, you should have your little mini stick on the throttle if you buy the t16000 pack you've got the twcs throttle you'll have that little mini stick which can be your slew sensor uh, to designate stuff move around on your radar or you can do it on your your joystick depending on the kit that you own so yeah there's limitations but considering we're doing this for free i don't think it's too bad let's go back to my browser so just to show like track IR which is certainly better with this Toby eye tracker so even if I want it I can't get it it's pre-order I won't get it till the start of August and it's £195 including that and the delivery that's it's not cheap is it uh, so a little bit more money and I just buy myself a VR headset like the Quest 2 and then play VR games and do sims in VR which is much more immersive so yeah if you want track IR that's up to you some people swear by it but we'll just point out that if you can get along with open track maybe you want to buy a touchscreen monitor so this is saying 230 pound but i've seen the 24 inch model go for like less than this 225 and the reason that i'd want to have a touchscreen monitor with dcs is to use helios so we've got captain zine who does these profiles so uh, i don't think it covers every profile but for the f18 as an example he's got these profiles for the free helios software so we can actually see our MFDs on this second screen and they're animated all the gauges will work the MFDs will work and if I need to push a button I can just tap the screen just tap the touch screen I need to do the upfront controller I can just tap those buttons I don't need to move a mouse uh, to move a cursor onto the on the main screen as we're doing with the head tracking trying to hold my head still so um, we can do those clicks so it really depends how you want to spend your money out uh, for a little bit more I actually think a monitor I'll get more use out of that obviously I can just have it as a second screen I'm doing one thing on the other screen when I'm not doing sims I can have a movie on the second screen it's just it's just how you want to spend your money those of you who want to buy into VR spend a little bit more uh, and get a quest 2 which is quite a good way to get into um, doing sims whether you're driving or flying uh, the quest 2 is a pretty good starting headset so we'll leave it there guys hopefully it's helped you out have a great day, have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.